Nico about Tony Joel and B. Cried last night. When is the last time you cried? I'm Tony Kornheiser. When Rihanna ghosted me. You know, one, you don't even know what ghosted means. Do you? Yeah. I do. Okay. Well, you'll tell two, me after the show. So, you know, there was that funny moment. Joel and B's first great funny moment on TV was when they said, What would you know, what would you say to Rihanna? And he said, Trust the process after she ignored him. When he was a young Does he guy. wants to date Brilliant. her? Does he want to date her at this moment? It seemed like that. You could be, you know, Even you, now? You're Joel and B, man. You got the world. The world. Are you going to, it's Joel another Embiid. train coming situation? Another train coming. That's the new one. Welcome to PTI, world. boys and girls. In today's episode, Joel and B cries. Steph Curry celebrates and LeBron has a new coach. But we begin today with one of the greatest game winning shots in the history of basketball. Right up there with Christian Leitner and Michael Jordan and Magic Johnson and anyone else you can name. Kawhi Leonard shot, hit the near rim, bounced straight up, hit the near rim again, bounced to the far rim, hit it twice, and gently dropped. Wilbon, what did you make of that shot, that ending, and that series? Okay, first of all, don't ever put Christian Leitner in that company again. Don't ever do that. It was a great I know. It was game a, it was a, winning it was a, it was a shot. Kids game. No, no, let's get to the to great the, to game the winning shot. Who played One of the most famous game. shots ever in college. The basketball. shot forces you to say first I just remember screaming out loud in my house I missed it because it's got to go back the other way the shot has to hit the front room and come back it was so soft and when it goes in there's just screaming yeah and mostly from for me and Matthew we're, we're screaming just like just like it was the announcers did they screamed you there's only one response and then to see Joel Embiid and I was obsessed with that and I still am to go to Mark Gasol, who obviously he had a relationship, and Gasol is saying to him, "You'll get back here. Don't, don't, don't do, don't worry about it." And Embiid afterwards saying, "Gasol had so much class to to help me out like that in that moment. This is this is what the agony of defeat is." And I'm thinking of all the people I despise and find loathsome who say pros don't feel, and it's only the college kids who feel. And I want to slap their faces and say, "Look at Joel Embiid. Yeah. It was a great game. It wasn't artistically played. It was it was contentious. It was wonderful. It was everything basketball and sports should be." So I watched that game carefully. I watched both games carefully yesterday. I was struck by the Toronto players who did not want to touch the ball, did not want to shoot the ball ever. Guys were all-stars, like Pascal Siakam is an all-star. I believe Kyle Lowry's Kyle been, Lowry's an, all-star been an all-star numerous times. Yeah. As soon as the ball got to their hands, they were looking for number two. Please, God, let Kawhi Leonard have this ball. Why did they bring shoot number two to Toronto? Because I don't want to shoot Why it. did number two so he come ends to Toronto? Up, he ends up taking 39 shots, not because he's a hog, no. but because he's willing he's, he's to He's being shoot. expected. The story of that series to me is how great Kawhi Leonard was. He averaged 35 points. 54% shooting. So Abs- he's the, you see the names so far in the playoffs, he's on the list with? He's the greatest player in the playoffs so far. I think far. the names up there right. with him, the only ones up there with him are like Jordan, Kareem, and Wilt in terms of scoring in a, in a series. Tony, he, he was great. I'm in my ear. See, I'm not an all-star yet, but a comeback player of the he's year. You're going to vote. He's going to be one. I mean, I'm, improved, I'm just thinking, I'm thinking that they cannot... Beat Milwaukee. Ooh, be careful. If they're no, if don't they're you think to shoot, the monkeys are off of them now? They've won this big series. They, were, they can never get past LeBron. You know what I'm getting at here. I know, but they were the pressure may be off. They were scared. They were, but they were. Scared. What we'll about see, what they're going to we'll be? Uh, well, you think I, they're still going to be scared? I, in a in a game seven to be scared at yeah, home. Game, everybody's scared in a game seven. It's game seven at home. Game seven. The real killer for the 76ers is they don't even get to say wait till next year. There may be no next year. Not with Jimmy Butler, Tobias Harris, and J.J. Redick all going into free agency. Embiid and Ben Simmons are under contract, and the Sixers could really get lucky if Sacramento jumps 13 spots and wins a lottery tomorrow Unlikely. But back to reality, Brett Brown's seat is more than a little warm, and now that the process is nothing more than a cliche, there is pressure to win now. Tony, where do the Sixers go from here? Clearly, they are a team in transition because of everything you're saying. I would not be surprised. I don't think you would be surprised if Brett Brown were no longer the coach next year. Wouldn't Wouldn't that be unfair? I don't know. There is that time. You know, an an owner says we have to advance. I know, but game seven of the shot that bounces four times. It's not going to surprise me if that happens. Uh, Tobias Harris, to me, is just a guy. I, I, I wouldn't waste time. Jimmy Butler has always struck me as a Hessian who will go to the best situation out there with the best money. But he likes Embiid. Embiid is the draw here. This is big brother. Let me get to he what I think is the heart of the question here, and it's Ben Simmons. Ben Simmons afraid to shoot. 
Now, they had a disastrous pick. to shoot from three. They had a disastrous pick with Markel Fultz, who became afraid to shoot. Ben Simmons, you, your lead guard, he's, he's really good. He's really good. But if he's afraid to shoot, do you move him and get a point guard and restructure around Embiid? What do you do? It's a lot of restructuring. Let me just say this. They should move heaven and earth to keep Jimmy Butler. Because Jimmy Butler goes and he, he can tease Embiid. He can push him. He can nudge him. You know he's unafraid. Agreed. He tried to do that in Minneapolis, and those guys didn't want to be pushed and nudged and mentored. Agreed, but, but will Embiid he look does. around and say there's enough here? See, that's what I'm asking. Oh, will Jimmy Butler do that? Yeah. You, got, you, you have to keep Simmons. Simmons has to go. He has to get better. I mean, Magic Johnson didn't shoot threes when he was young. He did it as he got older. It, Simmons can get better. I would not trade him. He, he can He's get too better. good. Does he look to you like someone who wants to sh- You got to shoot the ball. You don't have to shoot it all the time. He's got to get better at that thing. And listen, J.J. Redick is so valuable. But J.J. Redick could look and know. say, there's any number of teams where I could be the last there's piece to get off the bench. With Embiid is the key. With Embiid on the court in this series, they're plus 90. Minus 109 when he's off the court. You know what, Tony, you know what Jimmy Butler's got to do? Convince him. He's got to get in the kind of shape where he can play 75 games every Is he year. healthy? Plus the playoffs. Is can he, he be that? The Denver Nuggets were playing game seven at home. They got a 17-point lead and somehow managed to lose to Portland. Portland won despite its best player, Damian Lillard, missing 14 of his 17 shots. But C.J. McCollum, the pride of Lehigh University, got 37 points. Wilbon, how seriously do you take the Blazers' chances against Golden State now? Completely seriously, Tony. Look, they've played Golden State recently in the playoffs, and Golden State overwhelmed them. But we've seen that happen in the past in the NBA conference finals with, say, the the Celtics and the way they treated the Pistons until they grew up, and the Pistons and the way they treated the Bulls until they grew up. I see an an analogous situation here. Look, the Warriors are going to be the favorites, especially what we're going to get to about Steph Curry and that team and how they play with or without Kevin Durant. But when you got Lillard and McCollum, these guys are fully developed, mature guards now. You got a bench. I hope Rodney Hood's okay. We don't know that yet. You got, I mean, they've got a full team in Portland. They did not necessarily have that man for man four years ago, Tony. So I'm going to look backwards before I look forward, but I promise I'll look forward. I'm going to look backwards at, at Denver. This is an unbelievable choke job that happened with Denver last night. They're number two and number three players, best two and three best players, um, Paul Millsap. And Jamal Murray was seven for thirty-one I think at Gary home. Harris is I mean, the that's third just best, but well, seven for thirty-one. You can't. They had a tough shooting night. They missed seventeen straight threes. A lot of them were open looks. They're at home. You make one of those, you're going to win this game. You make one, so that was bad. Now to look forward, I look at Portland as a legitimate team. But Kevin Durant's not going to play game one. I don't think I he's going to play game two. I, I hope he does, but I don't think he's playing a series. Is no, he, I, don't, I, I think it's gonna, possible he's not going to play I, a series. Yeah. If they're at even strength, this is what I would say to you, that what Portland is very good at, Golden State is great at, and that's the difference. But if Kevin Durant does not – that's not one game now. No. If he don't play the whole deal, no. Portland can win. Our dear friend Charles Barkley on this show and his show and other shows has been saying Portland's going to come out of the West. I texted Charles I think immediately Golden after better. game seven, and I said, what now? And he said – I'm sorry, okay. did you hear me? Portland's coming out of the West. I'm going to pick like, Golden com- State. How about you? It's a you? compelling series. I and mean, we're going to talk about Are you going to pick Golden State? I I'm going to pick Golden State okay. because of what I just saw them do. Yep. But Portland, Tony, is an irresistible team. They are so likable. I know you're going to underestimate them. No, I'm because, not. yeah, because no, you not. spent the whole spring telling no. people you'd never seen them play. Not going to underestimate And Denver and, and Portland are not on them. your I-95 radar. I'm not radar. going to underestimate them. I'm going to say Golden State is better. That's Getting some respect now. You, some what? Spec. you don't even you put listen. some spec on their name. You don't even listen. You don't listen. No, because I'm making fun of you. You don't listen. Because you didn't watch them. You said they were in the land that time for God. God. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Don't expect me to forget that. We have to look back to Friday night now. And one of the amazing performances and outcomes in NBA playoff history. Steph Curry's 33-point second half. Golden State's stunning road win without Kevin Durant. And yet another Houston elimination from the playoffs at the hands of the Warriors. Tony, did that Curry performance in that one half diminish James Harden's performance over an entire season? Only a thousand percent. James Harden can score all the points he wants. What does he do in the playoffs? Steph Curry has zero points in the first half, and he finishes with 33 in a performance that evokes Michael Jordan. James Harden does not evoke Michael Jordan. We are done now 
with James Harden and Chris Paul and the Rockets. We are done. They are a second-round team. They're a fine team. They've had opportunity after opportunity after opportunity, and they can't beat this team. Well, they're not a second-round team. It depends on where they finish versus Golden State because ain't nobody else beating them, just Golden State. They don't and win. I would say that James Harden might evoke Carl Malone, another great player, who could not beat the best player of the generation. Look, I told you this this morning on your podcast. I, I, I'm not going to shred Houston. Um, they, it reminds me very much of, of John Stockton and Carl Malone. They got and to they the couldn't finals, get pe- They got to the finals only because Michael Jordan was on the other side. Was, but you know, no, what, but the, they you know got what that means, to the Tony, because of geography. It doesn't mean... Houston is probably the second best team in the NBA because of geography. I don't think they're the they have team. to play Golden State when they have to play them. It's like Mike, we don't you don't you don't make less of Patrick Ewing, Charles Barkley, Reggie Miller, and all stunning, those guys. They didn't it's a win. Stunning circumstance that you could be at home for Game Six and Kevin Durant, who was averaging about thirty-five points a game, yeah. is not on the court and you lose at home. I, I, you just. They're not as good, I, I Tony. So They're surprised. not great. Golden I'm State's so great. surprised at that. I thought they'd win the series. Me too. I did, Tony. I thought they were going to obliterate them in I game did. six. I did. And I thought Golden they State could win in game seven. Didn't it. even make it that The Los far. Angeles Lakers finally have a coach. He is Frank Vogel, who coached Indiana and Orlando. The Lakers gave Vogel a three-year deal, which was two fewer than Tyron Lue demanded. The Lakers also hired Jason Kidd as the lead assistant. But wait, there's more. Phil Jackson was reportedly consulted on Vogel and blessed the decision. Wilbon, how does this hire sit with you? I like Frank Vogel. I think Frank Vogel's been a worthy coach. It seems like LeBron also likes entertaining the notion of people that he has been rivals with in the past from bringing them aboard, which is why he had, you know, the crazy man from Vogel's team from Indiana come and, and play Stevenson. with him last year. The blue so, in his ear? Yeah. Yeah. So LeBron seems okay with that, that, that rivals, there's a certain connection mm-hmm. he has with them, and he probably knows he played against Frank Vogel. He may really respect... Frank Vogel. So I'm not going to sit here and, and diminish Frank Vogel. I don't know what the Lakers are doing. I'm not going to sit here and try to pretend like I know what the Lakers are doing. So if, if you know, take over. Well, I think there are, there are two things here that are, that are interesting to me. One is definitely going to happen. LeBron is going to wake up one day and he's going to say, I don't, I don't want to play for this guy anymore. And he'll do to him what he did to David Blatt. And then Jason Kidd moves right up and in and he becomes the How do you, Why do you presume he wants to play for Jason Kidd? Um, because he... He won't be Frank Vogel. That's why he wants to play for. So he wants to play for the next guy. The second thing that interests me is the reporting of the influence that Kurt Rambis apparently has about Kurt coaching. And Limber, Linda Rambis. Kurt oh, Linda whole, Rambis as well. Whole, yes. Here is Kurt Rambis's record as a coach I know in the it. NBA: thirty-two and one thirty-two. No, sixty-five and one sixty-four with the. Well, three thirty-two teams and one thirty-two. I think was Minnesota. What What does he know about coaching? If his record is sixty-five and one sixty-four, what What does I'm he not know? I'm going to say Kurt Rambis knows a lot about basketball. Kurt Rambis played I say on basketball. Laker teams, said coaching. and that includes coaching. Just because you can't coach yourself. What was Jerry West's record as a coach? But he could hire good coaches. Jerry West walked out and said, it's not for me. Okay, he, he couldn't get it done, but he could hire people who could. Let's, so not, let's not make Are that, you going to equate Jerry I, West I'm and Kurt say, Rambis? I, well, I, we're not going to use gonna what does them? he know about coaching as a criteria. But you just that. said you have no idea what the Lakers are I have no what their idea what they're doing. I don't think anybody has any idea right now. I would and hope that are, the owner did. Let me just say this. They're this close to being a clown show, bro. Let's take a break. Coming up is John Beeline, smart to leave Michigan to coach the Cavs. And we've got a remarkable new high school record in the 100-meter dash. Tony, you and I are a little late to this, but we need to give some love, don't we? Look at this kid run out. Look at this kid. Nobody's touching him. (laughs) Nobody. nobody. Pardon the interruption is brought to you by McDonald's and T-Mobile. Whether you're home or away, T-Mobile has you covered. Hi, I'm Sage Steele. Tonight on SportsCenter at 6 Eastern, Kevin Durant definitely out for Game 1 of the Western Conference Finals. How vulnerable are the defending champs as they get set to face Portland? Plus, SVP on the return of Tigers Gore heading into the PGA Championship. And a dive into the what-ifs about Zion on the eve of the NBA Draft Lottery. Shared answers to pedestrian questions. Let me see what's Bill first. Times. Here we go. Backhanded swipe at the viewer. Not backhanded, it's oh, direct. Okay. Would you have advised John Beeline to leave Michigan to coach the Cavaliers? No. I wouldn't have, Tony, um, except if he was 
candid with me and I was his counsel. And he said, look, this is this much money at 66 years old is too much to pass up. Then I would say, OK, I get it. And you could get back into college, maybe, but though not a job perhaps as good as Michigan. Look, the Cavaliers don't have the players for John Beeline or anybody else to be immediately successful. And you wonder how long they're going to have him as a college coach. And there's going to be that out there all the time, yeah. even though he didn't have the players. He didn't have big time players yet. Not enough of them. He's won every place he's ever been. He's won in high school, D3, D2, D1. His overall record is 829. 468. My guess is that he looks at this as an annuity. He's 66 years old. He's well, going to make course a he gets tremendous Zion. amount of money. If he money. gets Zion tomorrow, that changes the whole thing, okay, right? We don't think he's going to get Zion. He could. Maybe he looked around sure he at Maryland and Iowa and Wisconsin and Michigan State and says, it's hard to win here. I'll go to a place where the bar is really low because Cavaliers stink. I'll do better there as time goes on. That's money. what I'm thinking. Money, 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 money. <laughs> and that's not bad. I would, no, it's not bad not at bad. all. Well, I mean, he's earned no. that. Do you expect the Hurricanes to come back strong after eating a, and I'm saying this in quotes, right. poop sandwich? Well, here's a quote. It's from Justin Williams, who is Mr. Game 7. He is. Quote, you spend all this time leading up with everyone writing how great you are. You come out and sometimes you got to eat a poop sandwich. It doesn't taste good. you got to chew on it for a couple oh, of this days. This is nasty. This refers to them going down 2-0 to Boston, in Boston, yeah. right, giving up 11 goals in two yeah. games. Mike, I think that they're going to win game three in you Carolina. You think so? Yep. You think they can beat Tuka Rask? I think that they, they throw poop sandwiches out at Marshand on the ice. Did you get to know Justin Williams when he was part of your Washington Caps? A little bit with Miami the Caps. With he was a great player for the Caps. You, made, you sort of said it in a derisive way, Mr. No, that's what they call him, Mr. Game 7. Mr. Game 7, because yeah, yeah. he is, because he's beating yeah. everybody, including my yeah. team Last one. when he was yeah. in Los Angeles. He's, no, this he's, guy great. Play. he's a great player. Good captain to be talking. Matthew Bowling setting the all-time high school record in the 100-meter dash. Big deal, little deal, no deal. It's big deal squared. Yeah. Okay, just the number alone, this kid, Tony, he has a wind-aided 998. But he also had this 2-1-3. He's in high school. You look at him run. And look, I'm going to get to the most important issue here. This is a white kid yeah. doing this. This is Tiger Woods, okay? This is in when golf. you look yeah, this yeah, yeah. different from all the other competitors, it's an even bigger deal. This is in the state of Texas. They run in Texas. They got lots of the fastest guys in America. So the wind aided is 998, and that is rare air. That's Olympic air. You break 10, well, that's Olympic that's air. That's not Usain Bolt's Olympic air. No, nine, but, it's, five, but it's Olympic eight. air. Not only that, it's big, it's he nice. anchors the 4x400. Right. He throws a 4475 out there, runs the he kid down. He gangstered some kid. Whoa, let me get to Walked the big story down. here. He is also the state champ in a long jump. So he's Carl Lewis and Jesse Owens, yeah. maybe. So when you say, is it a big deal? It's a huge deal. I'm waiting for the headline. Huge deal. White men can't run. Well, it's this same. kid can he run. Can. He can. But can, can he survive the pressure that comes with everybody looking at him for Don't that know. reason? When you're a prodigy, that's it's hard, man. Tough to keep playing. Hope the he piano. does. Enough Great Let's story. Take one last He's going break. to Georgia, by the way. Still to come. Yasiel Puig takes out Madison Bumgarner, and then Bumgarner returns the favor after the game. This kid didn't want to go run under Carl Lewis in Houston. We got to find out more about this. We'll tell you how Tiger feels after this morning's practice round at the PGA. Oh, look at the hat. It's cold it's everywhere cold in America there. except Florida. It's cold there. Cold in New York. Cold there. Snow you, you in think Chicago. George is a bad place to run? No, I'm just a huge...